Now today the title of my sermon is You Have to Cut from Novus Ordo. And the reason why I'm giving you this sermon on the heels of two other sermons recently about polemical and apologetical things in the church, that is, our defense of the faith against the modern error, uh, is because I occasionally have an understanding from people that they have not yet sufficiently cut from the Novus Ordo, that they come here to Mass regularly, but they still have a finger in the Novus Ordo pie, so to speak. And they still regard it as the Catholic Church. So I must address these questions to you. Now we read in the Gospel today that the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of Truth. He is the Spirit of Truth because He infuses in us the supernatural virtue of faith, because He inspires the prophets and the evangelists, because he guides the Pope and the bishops in the infallible proposition of the faith, and because he is the soul of the Catholic Church. Now just as light and darkness are opposed, so is the Holy Ghost and falsehood. They are opposed. And for this reason it is necessary to cut from the Novus Ordo for it is a false church. It is a false church for the reasons that I have explained to you in other sermons, which I will quickly review here. First of all, because it officially teaches doctrines which are contrary to the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church, namely concerning the church itself, that the Catholic Church is not strictly identified with the one true Church of Christ. It teaches heresy concerning religious liberty. It teaches the exact thing that was condemned by Pope Pius IX with his apostolic authority and by Pope Gregory XVI and by Pope Leo XIII. It teaches what is condemned. It teaches heresy and error concerning the necessity of the church for salvation. It says that other religions are means of salvation and that is a heresy, an explicit heresy. In the preface of the new missal it teaches a heresy concerning the holy sacrifice of the mass, that it is only an assembly. Secondly, it is a false church because it has false rites, in particular the new mass, that is a rite which does not reflect the truth of the Catholic faith. It is like the Lutheran service or the Anglican service. And we know from the little book that was written by Father Cicada that there was a purposeful suppression of Catholic truths they took the prayers from the traditional Mass and they went through with their pens and struck truths, Catholic truths such as purgatory and other dogmas of our faith from these prayers and then placed them in the new Mass. That is a sure sign of a heretic, someone who does that. And thirdly, it is a false church because it has evil laws which are not conducive to eternal salvation, but which are conducive to hell, such as, for example, intercommunion with Protestants. As I said, I have explained all of these things at length in other sermons to you. I say this to you now by way of review. It is, therefore, necessary to cut completely from the Novus Ordo and avoid it and treat it in the same way that you would avoid and treat the Lutheran Church of America. But as I said, some continue to see this new church as the Roman Catholic Church. They think of it this way. 
they're in their parishes, they decide, I don't like the new Mass. I want to go and find a Mass that I like. And they seek out a priest that says the traditional Mass. They feel comfortable. They stay there. They figure, I have a right to this because it's traditional. Now, to act in this way is entirely Protestant because it is a rejection of submission to the church because of personal pleasure, personal preference. We must do what the Roman Catholic Church would have us do. And if you perceive that to be the Roman Catholic Church, you can't say, well, my personal preference is other than that, and therefore I'll, I will seek somebody to appease my personal preference. No, that is a Protestant way to act. We must submit to the Roman Catholic Church because the Roman Catholic Church has the authority of God. And submission to the Roman Catholic Church is submission to God. That is a cardinal principle of being a Catholic. And therefore, to simply reject offhand something that doesn't please you is to act in a Protestant manner. Thus, these people do not see two different churches because of two different religions, two different rites, two different disciplines. They see one church in which they would like to have their preference, but at the same time concede to others their preference. They have, therefore, the habit of frequenting both Masses, the New Mass and the traditional Mass, or at least of continuing to consider themselves members of the Novus Ordo Church. They cannot get into their heads the idea that their local parish, the church that they grew up in or that they went to for years in, has defected from the faith, that this building no longer has the Catholic faith in it. They cannot get that through their heads. And they continue to have a confused idea of their adherence to it. Now just as in the English Reformation, churches which were built by Catholics and who, which belonged to Catholics and in the eyes of God still to this day belong to the Catholic Church, those churches passed into heresy. Those buildings became houses of heresy. The great cathedrals of Canterbury or Exeter and York, they are Catholic cathedrals that have passed into heresy. So, on a mass scale, our own churches have passed into heresy. Now, these people who are confused about this issue look forward to the day when they can have the traditional Mass in the Novus Ordo Church. They see that as the great solution, where they can exercise their preference without having to step out of the auspices of the Novus Ordo Church. And they don't care about other people's preferences. They just want their own preference. This they say, will solve everything. Now, to reduce the Catholic Church to such a state where you have contradictory faiths under the umbrella of the same church is to turn it into a sect. Every sect has that. The Jews have the Orthodox on the one hand and they have the liberal reform on the other. They believe entirely different things, but they see themselves as being part of the same religion. The Lutherans have their Missouri Synod, which is the conservative Lutheran Synod or group. And then you have the liberal ones. And they're all part of the Lutheran Church. They're all in communion, all part of one great Christian church. 
And the Anglicans, they have the High Anglicans who use the same missile as we do and have the same rights as we do. And then you have the Low Church, which looks something like the Baptist or the Presbyterian Church. It's typical of a sect to be that way. This, the, what makes the Catholic Church Catholic is that it is one faith believed by all, observed by all. That's the very notion of the term Catholic. It is believed and observed by all throughout the world and throughout time. That is the very essence of Catholicism. And to split up the church into splinters of conservative or liberal observance is to reduce the Catholic Church to a sect. It no longer has the quality of being Catholic. And the solution is not to obtain authorization from modernists to be Catholic and to have a niche. The solution is that those heretics get out of the Vatican. That is the single solution. Nothing else will do. It is the only solution that the heretics get out of the Vatican and that a true pope, a true Catholic pope, be in there and guide the church and put it in order. Anything short of that, anything less than that, is doomed to failure and is a betrayal of Christ. But unfortunately, many have that idea due to Archbishop Lefebvre and the Society of St. Pius X, and God rest his soul, and he did many good things. But one thing that, that he has left us is this confusion with regard to the Novus Ordo Church. Many people have this idea that the solution is that we eke out an existence, an approval, in the Novus Ordo Church. And that as long as we can function with this approval in the Novus Ordo Church, then all of our problems are solved, everything is fine for the future. Many Catholics labor under that. It is a false, false solution. It is to be eaten by the dragon. Now, with this in mind, I just want to remind you of a few theological principles about which I have spoken many times before. Uh, but I just want to take you through the logical process once again. First, the Roman Catholic Church is the infallible teacher of mankind by the power of the Holy Ghost. Second, the Roman Catholic Church can therefore not be associated with an institution which teaches error to mankind. Impossible. Third, but the church of which John Paul II is the head teaches error to mankind. As we have already seen. Officially teaches error and heresy. Fourth, therefore it is, one cannot associate the church of which he is the head with the Roman Catholic Church. Impossible. The church of which he is the head teaches error. The Roman Catholic Church cannot teach error. They cannot be the same institution. Impossible. Logically impossible. Like yes and no. Logically opposed. Fifth, the Pope, meaning a true Pope, is the head of the Roman Catholic Church. You cannot separate the Roman Catholic Church from the Pope. And the members of the Church are identified as Catholics by being in union with the Pope. So the Pope is the head of the Roman Catholic Church. Sixth, if John Paul II were the Pope, then the Church of which he would be the head would be the Roman Catholic Church. Obvious logical seven but this is impossible 
that the church of which he is the head be the Roman Catholic Church therefore eight it is impossible that he be the Pope therefore conclusion it cannot be a mere matter of opinion as some say whether he is the Pope or not since to recognize him as being a true Pope is to recognize his church as being the Roman Catholic Church which is blasphemous which is to identify the spirit of truth the Holy Ghost the third person of the Blessed Trinity with the spirit of heresy that is a blasphemy so it is all logical it is a crystalline logical order that is available to the intellects of even the simplest people it is founded on our faith in the Holy Catholic Church and in the infallible magisterium of the Holy Catholic Church from it come some practical conclusions first mentally and psychologically break from the new church it is not the Catholic Church it has the appearances of being it and I will speak about that shortly but it is not the Catholic Church break from it it is the same thing as any sect that has broken off from the Catholic Church Henry VIII attempted to make himself the head of the church in England John Paul II has simply done the same thing but in Rome he has come in with his heresies and he wants to be the head of the church not only in England but of the universal church and impose his heresy and just as Catholics had to give their lives in order to resist the Anglican heresy we too must resist and reject him second do not refer to John Paul II as the Pope as if he were Pius XII or Pius X or as uh, to the local Novus Ordo Bishop as the Bishop as if he were the true Bishop of the diocese that is as if these people have the authority of Christ they cannot have the authority of Christ because they're heretics to to say that they have the authority of Christ to recognize them as the Pope and as the Bishop is to recognize their church as the Roman Catholic Church which is blasphemous because it teaches heresy so we must be careful to refer to John Paul II either as John Paul II or as Wojtyla or as JP2 and those are not terms of disrespect for as a heresiarch that is as a heretic he is not in he is not worthy of respect any more than any of the great evildoers of history are worthy of respect I don't think anyone say, would say that a Martin Luther or a Henry VIII was worthy of respect. And when we consider the perversion of the Catholic Church, the evil that that represents, he exceeds in evil doing even a Stalin or a Mao as far as the, the evil that he is perpetrating on the world. Stalin starved to death 10 million Ukrainians Mao put to death a similar amount of people maybe more but those are only bodies when you destroy the Catholic Church you destroy souls people go to hell as a result of this evil and not 10 million but hundreds of millions the destroyer of one soul or a general destroyer of souls is much worse than a person who murders the body our Lord even said do not fear those who harm your body but him who can draw your soul to hell so 
avoid those terms and just say John Paul II, JP II, or something else that indicates that you do not see the authority of Christ in him because he is a heretic. It is very important that Catholics resist the heresy and denounce the heresy and the heretic. Do not send money to Novus Ordo appeals. You get probably appeals in the mail for missionaries and all. It's not like the old days where you know there's nice nuns and priests and, and habits and cassocks teaching catechism. These people are revolutionaries. They they have weapons for 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 the destruction of government, etc. They teach all kinds of left wing and 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 very strange doctrines. Don't send them any money at all. It's a false religion. Do not arrange to have masses said by Novus Ordo priests, as some do. Uh, these uh, purgatorian societies sponsored by the no Novus Ordo, they don't even believe in purgatory. They don't believe it. They don't believe in the efficacy of the Mass with regard to releasing a soul from purgatory. They don't believe it. It's a holdover from the old days because it, frankly, makes money. And they profit from the basic conservatism of the lay people and they, they push those things. Don't, don't have anything to do with it. And besides that, the Novus Ordo Mass is invalid. The Novus Ordo Ordination is invalid. And the Novus Ordo Consecration of Bishops is invalid. Those priests cannot say Mass any more than your mailman can say Mass. Next, treat the Novus Ordo liturgy just like the Protestant liturgy. Because it is Protestant liturgy. Now, the rule for going to a Protestant liturgy or service is that you can't. It is tolerated, however, tolerated, which means something that is considered an evil but which can be permitted for a serious reason, tolerated for a serious reason, to go and passively participate for a funeral or a wedding. That means sit in the back and act as though you were watching a, a movie or something. Just sit. That is tolerated. The preference of the church is that you avoid it altogether. But it's tolerated. Treat the Novus Ordo that way. Pay no attention to Novus Ordo annulments because, again, they have no more power to give out an annulment than your mailman. It's a meaningless piece of paper. Don't be friendly with Novus Ordo priests or invite them to participate in your weddings or funerals, as many do. It has happened more than once where the traditional priest walks away from the grave and who comes out but a Novus Ordo priest to say his prayers over the person or inviting a Novus Ordo priest to say the rosary at the wake. Absolutely, no traditional priest will consent to that and you'll be stuck with a Novus Ordo Mass. It's just wrong. It is a testimony that the two churches are one and that the traditional priest is a co-religionist with the Novus Ordo priest. And we must give up our lives before we'd, we would attest to anything like that. We must die the death before we could attest to that. So do not invite them to weddings or funerals or as if they are some sort of person in good standing. They are not. They, they belong to a false religion. And they are ministers of a false religion. And do not go into Novus Ordo churches in order to pray, as many do. You can go in to look at them if they're beautiful, but do not genuflect, do not pray, do not use the holy water. They are pure buildings. 
buildings. That's all they are, like train stations. They might be beautiful train stations, but they're buildings. For as long as the Catholic faith is not in them, they are buildings. And what is worse, they are desecrated buildings. Now, in order to help you understand more, I'd just like to briefly explain to you, briefly, what the new church is. Because it does have the appearance of being the Roman Catholic Church. That's one of the reasons for confusion. The Lutheran Church of America has no appearance of being the Roman Catholic Church. But the Novus Ordo Church does have the appearance and the reason why it does is because it is the corpse of the Roman Catholic Church. It is the corpse. Let me explain this to you. Every institution has a body and a soul. It's just like a person. The body is, it consists of the members, the, that is the people, the management, that is the hierarchy, the institutions of management. This is all the body and as extensions of them, the buildings. That's the body of an institution. So General Motors has people, has management, has buildings. That's the body of that institution. The soul is the authority. It's the authority, it's what gives vitality, direction, identity to the institution. So General Motors is General Motors and not Ford because of two different corporate authorities. Even though if one day they wanted to join, they could. For the, the corporate body of Ford looks probably just like that of General Motors. But what makes them separate is two separate authorities. Now, the body of the Roman Catholic Church consists of the members, the hierarchy, the buildings as extensions of the members. The soul of the Roman Catholic Church is the Holy Ghost is God. It is the authority of God that makes the Catholic Church the true Church of Christ, the true Church of God, the one true Church. It is the authority of God which gives it vitality, direction, makes it to be what it is. For all religions have members, all religions have hierarchies, all religions have buildings. But why are they not the true religion? Because they lack the authority of God. They are not God's church. For example, the Anglican church has bishops that date from, from the first founding of Christianity. But they are not Catholic bishops because they do not have the authority of God. The, the Greek Orthodox church has bishops that have come from, in certain cases, succession of the apostles. But they are not the church of God because they lack the authority of God. What I'm saying is that every religion has a body, has hierarchy, has members. But what makes the true religion, the true religion is the authority of God. Now, if you take the body of the Catholic Church and pull out of it the authority of God, what do you have left? A corpse of the Catholic Church. And just as the corpse in the funeral home looks very much like the living person, so this corpse of the Catholic Church, which has this life of God pulled out of it, looks like what was. It's the same buildings, in many cases the same people, and the same structures of hierarchy. But because they are imposing this heresy, 
the life of God is not in it. There is an obstacle to the reception of authority from God because they are heretics. They themselves wish to reject the teaching of the church and impose their own ecumenical religion. And because of that, they cannot accept or receive the authority from God to rule the church. And what they rule then is a corpse of the Catholic Church. A dead body. Not the body of the church, but a dead body of the church. For example, Ratzinger, and this could be a whole other sermon, which I won't give right now. But Ratzinger recently spoke to Protestants in Rome in January in which he said that in the future what the ecumenical plans are are that the uh, that there will first be a type of great union of churches something like a UN of churches where each will be on the same level each will accept each other as they are each will be a thorn in the side to the other that's what he said and each will learn one from another when a sufficient of time, amount of time has passed for that then they will go to one church of Christ where the Pope in quotation marks will be simply will have simply a position of honor and not of authority this is Ratzinger this is the plan, he says, of the Protestant theologian Kuhlmann. There's a whole article about this. And Kuhlmann was interviewed and said, yes, this is what I think should happen. A Protestant, a Lutheran. He says, I agree 99% with Ratzinger. Protestant. This comes from Protestantism. This is what Ratzinger has. Ratzinger made this statement, I cannot even predict what the church of the future will be. Now the church is as changeless as God. It has come through 2,000 years changeless. It is the same today that it was in the early church. And he says that he cannot predict what the church of the future will be. That is in itself a heretical statement. If you were to ask me, what, what will the church be like in 50 years, or 100 years, or 500 years, I, I would say to you exactly what you see right now. Because God is changeless, Christ is changeless, His church is changeless. There is no doubt about what the church will be. But he says, I have no idea what the church of the future will be like. They have a frightening ecumenical agenda. And Ratzinger is considered to be a right winger. He's considered to be Mr. Conservative. And he's telling us about this agenda. What do the liberals have in mind? What, what is the liberal agenda for the Novus Ordo Church? So the solution is not to get on their bus into an ecumenical church. That is not the solution. The solution is to flush them out of the Vatican. Flush them out. That's the only solution and we as Catholics must have fortitude and strength in denouncing them and calling for their evacuation of our holy churches and sacred places. Not for coexistence, compromise, but flushing out, proper term. And a, a good analogy which sounds facetious, but which is not meant to be facetious, is Frankenstein. If you know the story of Frankenstein, he took a corpse and 
shot electricity into it, and this corpse supposedly had life and went around and destroyed everything. So these heretics, these people who are baptized Catholics but who have lost the faith, and who want to impose their loss of faith on the Catholic Church. These heretics, like JP II and like Ratzinger, are taking the corpse of the Catholic Church and infusing in it their life, in quotes, of heresy. And what does it do? It gets up and having the appearance of the Catholic Church goes out and destroys everything. So, Without being facetious, the term Frankenstein Church or Monster Church would be perfectly analogous and a good explanation of what has taken place. The Holy Ghost, the Gospel says, is the spirit of truth. He is the soul of the Catholic Church. He gives the Catholic Church what makes it to be the Church of God. The Catholic Church is infallible by his assistance. And in this period of the liturgical year when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Ghost, be faithful to the spirit of truth by refusing to identify him with the spirit of heresy which animates the Novus Ordo Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.